With me now on the comfy couch is someone who I have chased around Tacoma and back. And let me tell you, this woman is so worth it. Please join me in welcoming Desiree Wilkins Finch. You are with Rise LWP. And actually, let's make sure we say this correctly. You are the CEO of Rise LWP, which is Leadership with Purpose. Welcome to City Line, my dear. Thank you so much for having me. It's such a pleasure, and I'm just so humbled to just be in your presence and your energy. Are you kidding? Oh, well, I, it goes right back at you, sister. It doesn't even feel like, uh, what is it, 8, 9 o'clock in the morning? Yeah, it doesn't I don't, even yes, feel like it. Somewhere it's, it's too early for you to be so put together oh, and look you. so amazing. I tried, and just for you. And also to have brought your son in the studio yeah, with you, too, welcome. who's cheering mama. Mm -hmm. We can't see him right now. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about you are the CEO. EO and principal for Rise um, LWP. What does we talked about LWP or I mentioned it, leadership with purpose. Mm -hmm. How did that name come about? You know, I came up with uh, leadership with purpose because I saw that uh, leaders were just struggling. They were struggling to find their purpose. They were struggling to find direction. And many folks just wanted support and have a place that they could just be and explore the complexities of what it means to be a leader, especially leaders of color, to be yes. able to have a place to just, um, our, our theory of change is examine, explore, transform, a place to examine uh, social constructs uh, and un unpack other perspectives, explore what else is out there. And then in community and partnership, find the willingness to transform. Oh God. Do you have a, like a, a mission, a shirt I can wear? <laughs> a t shirt, yes. I, I, I need that. I'll get you one. I, I, exactly. <laughs> so, so with that premise, mm -hmm. how, how do you train leaders? What do you all do? We take our time. Oh. We, we take our time and explore the nuances and the complexities of leadership. We take our time. to. I, I, I give leaders the space to get the stories out of their body. Oh, I give leaders yes. the space to ask hard questions uh, and to, to, to explore and so that they can have the power to say what it is that they need and uh, be able to make the decisions and choices that they need to make for their, uh, for their professional path. So... In order for you to teach this and to be the living, breathing, fluid document of empowerment that I believe you are, tell me about your journey to Rise oh, LWP wow. because you, I want to know what was the epiphany? What was that genesis moment yeah, when you oh, woke up and question. went, Junior, hang on, <laughs> we've got work to do. <laughs> no, I love it. I started out as a musician. I'm classically trained flautist. I went to oh. Lawrence University Conservatory of Music. I, mm -hmm. You and Lizzo. Yeah. There we go. Oh, I love that. Did yeah. you put your flute with you? Yeah, I did not, I, but I am Next getting time. it overhauled. Next time I got you. <laughs> okay. So you, so you started out as uh -huh. a musician. Mm -hmm. And then what did you see that made you flip the narrative? So it, there, it wasn't a place of belonging for me. I didn't have a place uh, where I felt... Um, that I could be seen and heard. You know, I was yeah. a six foot tall black girl from the South Side of Chicago that loved to play Brahms and Bach, right? And I didn't have uh, the support at that time to truly explore um, the depth of classical music like I wanted to. I just had a passion for the sound and a passion for performing and being able to have the art just flow through my body. Mm -hmm. I was known to play barefoot because oh. I would move when I played and I needed to be grounded when I played. I can just see these feet mm -hmm. shifting the I weight would get of your lost. Hips in the music, yeah. Oh. So I, 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 I transitioned out of music and I became a union organizer. I did retail management for a while and saw the impacts of the decisions and the choices that I had to make as a, as a leader managing a budget in the lives of the people that I worked with. And they were deeply affected by corporate decisions. They were deeply affected by the depth of capitalism and it broke my heart. And so I became a union organizer. And even in the world, and I will always uh, support unions and working class family, but even even in the industry of, of unions, um, and I'm so so excited to see uh, the the new president and vice president of the Washington State Labor uh, Council, April and um, uh, Sharika. Yes. I mean, that is so amazing. That is so huge. You know, I didn't have that depth of support either when I was a, a organizer, and I can remember 
um, tools being withheld from me until they felt like I was um, humble or qualified enough, right? right? I thought that you should be at the table. Exactly. That table. Exactly. And so I wanted to take some of that power back. Um, and I don't want other leaders, especially, again, especially leaders of color, specifically black women leaders, to have to go through those uh, hurdles alone. And so that's why I created Rise OWP, is so that folks could, could have the, the, the support from a strategic uh, 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 coach. I, I do executive coaching as well, um, so that they don't feel alone, that they, they could have a third party to journey with them uh, as they make decisions and lead. Oh, this is, I mean, I, I, I want an hour to unpack all of this. <laughs> because when you said you were a, an executive coach, mm -hmm. I thought, of course you are, mm -hmm. because this is your baby. Yeah. You, this is your vision. Mm -hmm. So you need to be the one who's in charge of steering it. Um, you have been very intentional about philanthropy. Tell us about some of that work and how that ties in. Yeah, I had a, a young lady who, I, a, a, an alum of Leadership Tomorrow, class of 20, and a young lady was interested, a prospective uh, young lady was interested in, in doing Leadership Tomorrow, but it does cost a little bit. Okay. And so I um, told her I would offer her a scholarship. And um, the scholarship criteria is uh, for African-American women between the ages of 18 and 50. Oh, I love <laughs> that range. And all they have to do is write a proposal of how they're going to support another black woman leader for 30 days. And she says, can I choose you? And I was like, well, absolutely, Chanel Powell. And she chose me and she took all of the philanthropy work that I do through Rise OWP and created a nonprofit for me, Women With Purpose. Did you see that coming? I did not. I, I, didn't even, I didn't even think about it. I didn't even wrap my brain around the, the fact that I was doing philanthropy work. I purchased five business licenses a year. Um, I've given to, um, oh God, I hope I get the name right. I'm so sorry. Uh, um, it's okay. Uh, Amanda. Amanda Scott Thomas, she does a lot of work oh, with young women. Do, and, oh, and she the, runs those beautiful yes, pageants. Yes, and so I've given, you know, in, in support of that. And so um, I've also offered... Uh, 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 scholarships. I call it the Leola Morgan Scholarship for young women who, who do work for me. If it's political work, knocking doors um, or helping me with the business. Uh, I, I hate to say filing papers because nobody files papers anymore. But even but if it's do. just filing papers or anything. So I offer scholarships to them as well. And so she took all of that work and said, let's make it a nonprofit. Help me create the 501c3. And now we have this whole nonprofit woman of purpose. How long ago was this? Maybe six months ago. Oh my gosh, this is fresh. Brand spanking new. Well, mm. get down with your bad self, <laughs> Miss Chanel. Oh my gosh. She did, she did a, a marvelous, she's doing a marvelous job. So, so this, oh, I have so many things now more to ask you because that leads to women of purpose. Mm -hmm. And I almost think that the phrase women of purpose is, it's an oxymoron because mm -hmm. all women Have are purpose. women yep. of purpose. Mm -hmm. But what does that mean to you? I think for me, I found myself, you know, transitioning from music to retail management. I did ran political campaigns for a little bit. I had the privilege of uh, running Victoria, our mayor's Victoria Wood, Wooders first campaign. I had all of these things that I could do and felt like I could do well, but still didn't know what was my north star. What was my oh. what was my purpose? What am I doing yes. this for? What's your compass? Yeah, what's my compass? Why am I on this journey? And uh, what can I offer to the world um, that the world could benefit from? And I realized that I wasn't alone, that there were no. other women who felt that same way. And um, I just wanted to create a space for us to just examine, explore, and transform together. Oh, and so that's what we do. So you would, I, I mentioned to you about um, black theater and, and the stories that it tells. Um, the Tacoma Black Fund is a part of that. Tell us how that yes. works. Yes. Uh, so um, one of the things that I, um, one of the folks I'm in partnership with is South Sound 100 Women. I give to that. Oh, yes. I love it. I think it's amazing. I was so moved. I was actually uh, one of the first folks, um, uh, I'm sorry, Chrissy Cooley uh, mm -hmm. uh, told me about the organization. And um, I was able to to participate and win ten thousand dollars for a yes. sound outreach. You when stood I up there. and talked about your company, yep. and they went yes. Yep, and they gave ten thousand dollars when I worked for Sound Outreach. And so I said, 
it's a great organization and I, I think folks should give. I said, what if we did this just for black programs and black funding? Yes. Um, where we have a hundred folks who give a hundred dollars uh, four times a year mm -hmm. for black programs. Yes. Where we don't have to feel like we're being tokenized or set apart. Like we have a space where we can fund um, the things that we are interested in and that serves us. Yes. And so um, I'm in the process of writing a proposal for Tacoma Black Fund. So many people have said that they wanted to not only be a member, but they want a, a sponsor. Uh, so we'll be able to be have a oh, wonderful, absolutely wonderful. So we'll have opportunity for people to be members so that they can vote on these amazing programs, but there also be opportunities for folks to sponsor. I love that. In this last 51 seconds, mm -hmm. as I because I told you it goes by it fast. It goes so fast. Um, when you look back uh, in 10 years, who do you want to thank and who, how will you measure your work? Oh, wow. I, I do. And I always, when I do work specifically in Tacoma, I always thank Mayor Woodard. She's um, amazing. She is amazing. And she opened up 30 years of relationships and resources to me. And I still nurture and have built an amazing business and career because of those relationships. Annie Jones Barnes and Patricia Taunton, <gasps> those are my mentors, friends, pastors, Goddesses. aunties. Yes. They literally opened up their wallets and paid for my business license when I couldn't afford it. Because of them, I've been able to build a business. As a matter of fact, my uh, uh, um, fund for business owners, I purchased five business licenses a year, is named after them. Um, my family, my friends, my ALF buddies, class Junior of 27. My baby sitting yeah. over there. I couldn't do the things I do without well, him. Well, unfortunately, I have to say, we have to go. Oh, it I know. was such a pleasure. This has been wonderful. Can I? invite you back on in 90 days I to talk love. about what 2024 looks like Absolutely. and how we can help you. I would love to come back. It's a date. We have much more to come on CityLine. Don't go away. We'll be right back.